Strawberries are awesome, and when they're in season, you should take the opportunity to make fresh strawberry syrup. It's something you just won't regret. Now the recipe we're making today is the one they used at the soda fountains back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And what they do right is they get the intensity of the flavor along with the sugar and acid balance right. So whether you're making cocktails, sodas, or non-alcoholic drinks, this is the one you should probably use. Or at least it's a starting point. So stick around, I'm gonna show you how to make strawberry syrup. I'm Darcy O'Neill, this is Art of Drink. I'm the author of Fix the Pumps, The History of the American Soda Fountain, and today we're making strawberry syrup. And it's really simple, it's gonna require four, four ingredients max. So you're gonna need some strawberries, some sugar, some water, and some citric acid. And that's it. And if you can use fresh strawberries, obviously that's gonna give you the best flavor. But this recipe will work with frozen strawberries. So if it's December and you can't get them, but you want strawberry syrup, the frozen will work. But since it's June right now, strawberries are in season, let's use fresh. We're gonna get a, a more intense flavor. Now the recipe is really simple. You're gonna need a quart of strawberries. So that's roughly 675 grams. You can add more, you can add a little less. Uh, again, it's just kind of a quart. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to add the strawberries to a pot. Now we're not going to cook the strawberries, but we are going to muddle them with some sugar. So this is just one cup of sugar. And then we're simply going to smash this up. And this is just gonna help extract ooh, all the flavor. We, do, we are gonna heat them up and we're gonna heat them to about 72 degrees Celsius. And that's going to allow us to basically pasteurize this. Pasteurization temperature is at 72 degrees Celsius is 15 seconds. So we're gonna heat up some water. We're gonna pour it on, but even though we add 500 mils of water to this, it's not going to be enough to get the temperature up to 72. So we're just going to do that uh, gently. And then once we get it up to temperature, we're gonna turn it off. And then we're gonna let this sit for 10 minutes just to basically macerate. Now the only goal with the muddling is to bust up all the strawberries so you can get the maximum amount of extraction. So once you have your strawberry and sugar mashed up, it's a fairly liquid, liquidy pulpy mass. You're just gonna put it on the burner and we're gonna add 500 mils of hot water. I've preheated my hot water. And we're just going to add that. Now we're gonna turn on the burner and just get it up to 72 with a little stirring. So once you've added your hot water, uh, you can just check the temperature. You're only gonna get up to about like 35, 30, 40 degrees. So we're gonna heat this until we get to 72. And obviously you just wanna do a little stirring with it. So now that we've let this sit for 10 to 15 minutes, we're going to strain it. And I just use a strainer with a little bit of cheesecloth in there. And that will just help uh, stop it from plugging all the pores in there. So just basically dump it in there and allow it to sit. Now it's going to take you know, 10 minutes. So now we'll just set this over here to strain because that takes another 10 to 15 minutes. But what you'll end up with is almost a liter or a quart of strawberry juice. And obviously there's a little bit of sugar in there and a little bit of water, but it's, you can definitely smell it. It's quite intense. Now, if you don't get one liter or one quart, you can simply add a little bit of water through the mash and that's how the instructions stated that you just add a little more water to the mash. I wouldn't recommend pressing this because you're gonna end up with a really cloudy syrup. Now it's not too bad. You can make these perfectly clear by putting them through a, you know, a jelly bag or a filter bag. But for my purposes, this works. You can also let them sit in the fridge overnight and it'll actually settle out. Uh, so if you want really, really clear syrups, that's the way to do it. Either let it settle, run it through a jelly bag, but do not press that. This is what we wanted today. Now give your pan, wash out your pan so there's no pulp in there. Because what we're going to do is we're going to add this back to the pot. We're not going to add any heat. And it's still quite warm. It's probably about 45, 50 degrees Celsius right now. And then we're gonna add 1100 grams of sugar. 
And this is a two quart pot, so it just fits nicely. And then we're just gonna stir that until it all dissolves. So you're gonna make roughly one and a half liters of syrup with this method. Now with stirring, it will all dissolve. It may take like 10 minutes of stirring. You can add a little bit of heat if you want, but you know, don't go any higher than 50 degrees Celsius. You know, hot enough to touch, but not hot enough to burn. Now, the one thing we want to figure out is what the pH of this is. And you don't need to measure this all the time. I'll do it for you once. And again, uh, sitting at 3.25, which is about expected. So the pH of it is fine if you just want to keep it like this, it's below four. Uh, so it's not going to form botulism. That's your major protection. It's having a pH below four to protect against botulism or any other uh, pathogenic fungi. But the reality is, is when it comes to actually drinking it, it's a bit insipid. You need, it's not as bright as if you were to add citric acid. Now in the old days, they would have made a citric acid solution and added that, but since this will be fine. We're going to add roughly 12 grams, and that is one tablespoon. So simply take a tablespoon, level it off, and add it straight to the syrup. And that will give you some brightness in your drink. It'll actually make, you can actually add more if you want. Uh, we can also add a little bit of ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C. And vitamin C's would help, again, it increases the acidity a bit, but also kind of protects the color. It's an antioxidant. So it does a pretty decent job of helping keep the color. Though strawberry color isn't particularly great. So often in the soda fountains, they'd either add an artificial color, which you don't need to do today, but red currant or cherry syrup will give this a darker red color and it won't have much effect on the flavor. But if you're fine, it is quite red. I'll show you in a minute once we get the sugar dissolved, the color of it, because it is quite bright, but it, uh, once, added, once it's added to soda or diluted, it's quite light in color. So that is your strawberry syrup. It makes about a liter and a half. So you'll see that it is a brilliant red, but once again, you add that to soda water, it's going to be quite light in color. And if you do want to adjust it, black cherry juice is a good way to adjust it and or red currants. Now you do want to keep this in the fridge. It's not going to last. I've made this stuff before and it will ferment. For some reason, even with this high sugar content and low acidity, you're there's still some element of fermentation that will go on in this. Uh, you can add something. Some people will try to add alcohol. That's not going to help. Like that alcohol, even an ounce, is not going to help preserve this. If you do want to have some preservation action, uh, glycerin. So add an ounce or two of glycerin to this. It also helps stabilize the color and stabilize uh, the syrup. And this is what they used to use at the soda fountain back in the 1800s. Natural vegetable glycerin uh, is your friend. Now, if you're making large batches of this for a bar or you wanna keep it all summer long uh, for guests and whatnot, uh, you really, other than really keeping it close to, you know, uh, freezing point without freezing, potassium sorbate is the way to go. This will inhibit yeast and fermentation. And you basically need a quarter teaspoon per liter of syrup, 0 0.075 grams. Now, potassium sorbate is natural. They do use it in jams uh, and other things. It does work as a good preservative. So that's how simple it is to make strawberry syrup. Now, I'm gonna be using this in the future. So feel free to subscribe to see those videos. Also hit the like button if you like this video. And thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.